Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Hope you're all safe and well. This is an unboxing and I've decided to join the Light Fantastic. I actually purchased this about four days ago and the day after I purchased it I got my money sent back. They didn't have it in stock. So I went to wheel spin models that I've purchased a lot of aircraft from to be honest. They had it in stock, I purchased it, delivered the next day and today is the 14th of August, it's a Saturday. I've zoomed out as much as I can do to get it into frame. So we'll do the usual, I'll reveal what it is, move the box to one side, open it up and take a look at the goods. And there we have the E-Flight or Horizon Hobby if you will, Night Radian. Now this is the FT flight test version, but I thought it was appropriate because FT can also stand for flanker tanker. So I've got the Night Radian FT. 2 meter wingspan, they've just released a new version of this, I've no idea what the difference is except that I know it's not flight test. You can see they've got lots of different colour combinations they're trying to display, I believe it's got over a hundred. A couple of things I'll point out straight away about this, the tailplane, horizontal stabiliser and elevator are held on with sticky tape, uh, that's the sticky tape they provide. Don't do it. If you haven't got one of these yet, look at all the videos on YouTube and you will see that there has been crashes because this tape has given way. This whole tailplane has moved, I think it's forward, which means the elevator goes full up, you get no control and it just loops the spirals into the ground. When building this one, use either reinforced taping, the broad packing tape, the clear tape, or the fibre reinforced tape or just glue the blinking things in but if you glue them in I recommend that you use foam tack or you hoop pour. The other problem with this is that the actual fuselage is very weak basically if you were to hold it here this would break. I've seen repairs or I've seen mods where what you do you insert a carbon spar a flattened carbon spar along here or along the top it just gives it that bit of rigidity and strength so that's the second thing I will be doing and the third thing is I will be stripping out all the electronics for the lights why am I doing that? Well that's because I have purchased one of these. What is this I hear you ask? Well this is a wingnuttech.com remote LED controller. It's got so much functionality it's unbelievable. You can connect it to the receiver, program it on different switches or indeed rotary knobs on your transmitter and you can cycle through the light patterns as you're flying. Not only that, it actually gives you navigation lights. So the left and right wings, the port and starboard wings, the last LED on those wings will remain green or remain red. So let's stop talking about it, let's open it up and see what we've got. Let's just move this to one side, open it up and see what's inside the box.
there's the manual night radian ft tune meter it comes in italian french german and english and the one i've purchased is a uh, safe and AS3X. It's good that we get a manual. This massive sheet is all about the speed controller and it's a 30 amp Pro switch mode Beck brushless version 2. This is the goodie bag, not much in it. Two screws, and well, three screws, I believe one is a spare. Fine plug, and these little pieces of tape. Do not use them. By all means, use them just to basically put the elevator where it needs to go. But then tape it in with packing tape, the clear packing tape, or use the reinforced fibre tape to hold it in, or glue it. Basically, do not rely on this tape to keep your elevator safe, your horizontal stabiliser and elevator. Mm -hmm. There's a wing spar. It looks as though it might be carbon, but it could be fiberglass, but it's quite long. Mm -hmm. Tailplane or if you like the horizontal stabilizer and elevator now this is laminated this is so clearly laminated the whole hinge down here is laminated which is brilliant it is still quite stiff i also don't like the fact that they have no joining spar so as i do that it is possible that these might not go together so one of the things that I will definitely be doing is putting the, taking this off the horn first of all and then putting a thin spar into this to make sure it joins up yeah that surprised me I didn't think they'd not have that the other thing I'm not particularly happy with but it's my fault is they tape this into the side of the box and I cut it with a pair of scissors and of course I've damaged the surface slightly naughty me but I don't like the fact that they put packing tape onto the actual surfaces I like this it's a reddish burgundy color but I've got a funny feeling no it doesn't yeah free I was going to say it might cover the LEDs, but it isn't. So that's one LED strip. And this is the LED connector. And there's LEDs up here at the top. Now the board I have will make these permanently white. Whereas if you don't use the board, these change colours along with everything else. Yeah, but the moulding is fantastic. Uh, ooh, dare I say it, it looks like FMS moulding. It's really dense, it's compact. Oh, that's my alarm. And of course it's got safe and it's got AS3X. Yeah, very nice. Don't use the tape to secure this, use another method. Wow, this is neat. What a wing! Of course, it's got no aileron. It uses elevator and rudder. That's so smooth. Wow. So this is the left wing, which makes it port. And therefore, using the new controller I've purchased, these LEDs will be red. They will stay red no matter what colour assignments or patterns you assign. These do cover up LEDs. 
looking at the spacing so I will probably trim these and see if I can't take that up now I've been told and I've seen videos that it's quite difficult to get that plugged in to the existing system yet alone the system I'm going to install so what you need to do you put a Y lead or an extension from the system I'm going to install to either side of the fuselage and then you clip it in this goes into the fuselage and then you screw the wing in look at that brass fitting there and I think you screw it in from underneath because this has a cutout that actually goes in line with a moulding, a plastic moulding on the fuselage but it's quite nice I do like the FT logo it's got a Ryzen hobby down here as well it's a big sticker so I'm quite happy for that to stay exactly where it is and that's the wing, moulding is beautiful tiny tiny injection marks the foam's dense, compact, it's lovely so that's one wing here's your second wing which is exactly the same and again my controller board will make sure these are permanently green there's three LEDs there I think but they will be permanently green but all the rest of the LEDs down here you can still cycle through the colour patterns this here I thought it was the wire covering but it isn't it's a spar covering so they've actually got a wooden spar in here you can see a bit of it there that goes in and then of course you have your main wing spar which goes in through there Sorry, let me just take a look at the decals. So there you go, you got the flight test FT. Okay, these red markings, I'm not pleased about this. It's obviously just strip strip. But yeah, there's definitely two LEDs there and there's two LEDs under there. So I've got to work out how I'm going to take this off. but it's good I like the mouldings it's beautiful and that's really all there is to it except of course the fuselage which I have in my hands right now yeah you can see how flimsy this is it feels it so what I will probably do on this I'm not sure where the lights are I'll have to test where the lights are on this fuselage the thing I've seen is that you put a spar in the side here that goes in that way a flat carbon spar that way and you also put a flat carbon spar this way or from the top and it just strengthened this whole all this whole thing up because you can twist it and it's and bend it and you, to glide well you need something really stiff and strong so I will be doing that mod when I assemble big rudder really and this is the plastic piece where you literally you slide your elevator in and then you tape it now this is the connector for the LEDs and I'm told that once you connect to that you have some wires dangling well I've got to look at that and see what the best solution is but we'll get it all sorted out and tidy I do like this these bumps with metal hoops or metal pins holding the push rod out of sleeve because it's got the flight test and the e-flight logo this is just a decal strip sticky strip nice shape nice design folding prop so there's one of the blades of the folding prop yeah, 
the second blade. The canopy is clear because it has LEDs in it as well. Um, yeah, it's only held on by magnets. It's got two magnets there. One at the front, one at the back. It just clips in. That's good. There, oh no! It's an AR636A. But that's okay, I can still release the channels on it because you see you've got spare channels here four five and six but horizon hobby blocked them just stupid i really don't know why and you need a programming lead which you plug into the bind port but this this is a mess look at it so all this oops sorry so all this is coming out from mine Oh, the speed control is down there, but all that will be going. I won't need it. That will be changed. It's an EC3. I'll be putting an XT60 on. And there's plenty of room in there for a battery to get the central gravity correct. And then none of this will be here, so the battery can go forward and back. And it does make it so much cleaner. But also, of course, remote control of the lights. This is the moulding where the wing joins and then you put your screw up. You're supposed to feed your servo wires through there. So what I'll have, I'll have a servo extension coming out so I can connect and then just push it in as I join the wing. That's the same for this side. There's your spar pass through, so the spar passes through here. So if you get that right, it should be okay. You put the spar on, put the wing on, connect up the lights, push the cables through there as you push it in, and then just screw up there. Shouldn't take too long. So here's the underside. It looks like that's magnetic as well. It's held on with a magnet here. This block. Now this block is purely for the lights. So all of that will be coming out. I will unplug all of these. That block will come out and the circuit board I've purchased will sit here in its place. And these will plug back into that circuit board. Plastic front end, all nice. Cooling. Got a skid there, it's okay. Plastic under here, so you can just open it up. A little plastic skid here at the end. And that is it. Hand launch, just give it a good old toss. And off she goes, and that's it. That is all there is to it. There is nothing else in the box. So I'm looking forward to putting this one together. Oh, news flash, as I was making this video, would you believe it? My carbon rods arrived. Let me show you these. There you go. They're carbon flattened rods. So the idea here is I'll cut this down to size and it will be embedded into the fuselage this way to give it stability that way. And the second rod will be embedded into the fuselage thusly this way so you've got one going down one going across it might actually embed it from the bottom I'm not sure yeah it'll look better from the bottom so I'll put one in from the bottom and then one in to the sides from about there keep it level with the end of the wing and that will just go straight in there, it will be epoxied in place and it will give this some um, rigidity here they're known to twist and flex in flight I'll give it some rigidity the nights are drawing in, the days are getting a bit shorter 
So when I go out flying in the mornings, it's darker. The night radian will definitely be going up. So thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you on another video. Cheers.